everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here. I'm going on live on the video here. I'm going to give uh, Tight Stops a call. I got some, uh, you know, I want to start a discussion here because we're looking at the, the market right now. I'm um, doing some research for the HPS watch list, but also looking at the uh, overall markets to kind of doing a market radar. And um, I want to get people's opinion. You know, yesterday we had a good debate on if the market's moving higher before it moves lower. A lot of people, everyone, basically saying, all right, market's due for a pullback. Pretty obvious, all right? Captain obvious, everyone. Um, sure. But also, you know, when that happens, when that happens, when that type of scenario plays out and everyone's expecting one thing, the market tends to do the opposite. So we are at a point here that we're very close. I don't want to show you this. On the SPX, we're up here. We have a perfect flag. Well, this is kind of a market radar video too. A perfect flag, continuation, flag, continuation. But everyone says, no, too fast, too far. But... You know, <clears throat> so hard to say, and you know, by the, but the one thing I'm seeing is the recent highs up here, where we are in, um, our administration's, um, ter you know, term of you know Donald Trump and running for president and the re-election bid and where the market should be at that point, you know, a lot of different questions out there. Has the market come up? Are we going to take out the highs and push higher? Which I think we are going to do that so officially what i believe we're going to do is we're going to melt up to the highs and take out the highs before we pull back um and i think that will be a that might register as a monthly divergence um that i'm looking for as you can see the stochastics rotating back up here the market the candle here is right here and a recent high up here is, is here we're very close to taking out that high but the stochastics are not that close to being overbought again so we end up taking out the highs on the monthly and this fails to get above that 80 then i'd start looking for maybe a rotation back down um but i think right now you have a bullish scenario a bullish flag set up here um i think we're going to resolve to the upside i think we're going to probably might get, even get a nice rally tomorrow on a friday uh, but the question i'm going to have a discussion with rob and anybody else who wants to chime in on this is um, I believe the market's going to take out the highs or head back up. I think 3,000 is a number that we're going to see in 2019. If that played out, what would be the best way to approach that? All right, so let me bring up, let me call Rob. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through it. An average white boy, I heard mentioning... What if uh, Democrats start impeachment hearings and stuff? Yeah, it will disrupt the market, you know, because, hey, there is, uh, you know, a very stock market friendly president. And now, what is going on? Uh, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, of course, if there's any news out there that, um, uh, you know, like that, then all bets are off. All bets are off then. Calling the fight. Calling it off. Right now, everything looks great. If we are pushing higher, this is what I'm, I'm suggesting. We know that if I, um, I want to get rid of, I want to clean up the chart a little. So get rid of these lines. Right now, the recent high up here. All right, there we go. Hey, Rob. Rockstar. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, kind of describing what I'm thinking here. All right. So just bear with. Yeah. Our, we had October highs. Um, gotcha. They were up here. I don't. I'm not gonna pinpoint the top, but it's right around 29. 30 all right if we move back up there on the spx the cash right from where we are now up to 29 30 uh, give or take that'll be about a five percent move all right five percent move not bad all right do you think we get back up to the recent highs yes yeah it seems pretty obvious we're going to do that i think we get through that you think we hit 3,000 if we go to 3,000 
um, say this year, that that represents a 7% move on the S&P cash. But just getting back up to the highs is a 5% move. Now, if we took that and we trans we looked at different ways to trade this going into it, and the, the ones I was looking at, someone asked about the options. I said, well, let's we'll talk to Rob about the options. But the ones I was talking about was the SPXU or SPX, uh, the L, excuse me, which is the three times uh, the S&P return. So in theory, you know, you have that high back here, which is the same high. If we do our move here, which was a 5% move on the cash, this ends up being a 22% move on the SPXL, which is only trading at $44. Now, a 22% move is a great return any way you look at it, right? So my question to you, would you take 22%? It's not a guaranteed trade, but if you're, not, if you're in just the, the shares, it's not like you're going to have that time decay. And I think there's a better chance we're going to get through that recent high before we move significantly lower. So this is a pretty decent play because you're not going to get blown out of it with your options. Um, right. And it's not that bad. It's $44. It's $44. I mean, yeah, you could buy a couple hundred shares and risk some money, but it's not going to zero. Um, you know, it tracks the market. So if that's a nice percentage, right? You have a 22% gain to get up just back up to the highs if you had stock on this or you had these, these the stock in the X, SPXL versus the 5% move. So that's good. I mean, is that something you would consider? And then someone says, what option play would you take to, to gain? If you're, if you're pretty sure that you were going to take out the highs, how would you play it in options? Uh, I would probably do like Keldar does. I would sell credit spreads. I would sell a put spread. All right, you have to walk me through it. that. Okay, so you want to do SPXL, right? Yeah. I was just looking at spiders. All right, let's just do make it simple. Simple. Yeah. That's fine. Let's take a look at the spider, SPY. Okay, so spiders, you're thinking this thing has to go to 290. It's going to take out that 293, 94, which was the high. Yeah. Great. Right? Yeah. So the uh, the September September twenty first, two thousand eighteen. Right. That was the uh, basically the high. Mm -hmm. Okay. For that, what I would do is so. If you think this thing is just going to keep climbing up this, uh, you know, twenty EMA on mm -hmm. a five, or, you know. I'm Which I do, trip. but I don't have the timing down. Right. I would think you'd want to sell a 270 put and buy a 260 right. or 265, which would give you a, your target would be $14. Hmm. Or, John, you could just buy calls, man. Just yeah. buy calls to the spider. Well, I thought about that too, but how does that, you know, decay work? How far do we have to go out to really not get affected by, you know, I want to get the same percentage. I want right. to, I want you to be able to tell or someone to be able to tell me because I'm not that proficient in, in figuring out what my time decay is going to be. I don't have a good program that maybe uh, Thinkorswim has that. Like I could go out and say I want to get this return. Um if it gets there between this time and this time versus this time, like, are we going to get there before July? Are we going to get there before, you know, that maybe July, we could use that July. And then we could go out to July here. I mean, is that how we would play it? Or would you go out further to get the... Uh, I would probably even go further out. Yeah. It's what they got as far as just the spiders go. All right, so I have the spiders up here. I'm going out, um, going way out to June, September. You think we're going to have a summer slowdown? No, I think we grind up. Uh, we grind up. We just grind. We start to get into a, a pattern like um, on like if we look at this monthly chart here. Let me bring it up over here. Move this over. Think we grind up and go to all time highs in yeah. uh, by Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say we get up to, to all-time highs before the end of the summer. You know, I'm, I'm looking at these highs here very fast. Um, Average says there's that the uh, 20, what's the, uh, open interest on what December twenty three hundred calls are four seventy five. December um. 280, what was that? The 300s. Oh, I don't have the 300s on my screen. That's why I can't see it. Let's see if I can bring those up. I don't like how this... Um, I wish I just have them all. I don't know why it does this. There we are. Um... So what am I looking at? 2019, March. All right. I don't know. I'm looking at the September 277s. All right, there's the December. If this spire pulls back, where do you think it pulls back to if it does? Um... That's my question for you. 268? Yeah, we'll call it that. That's perfect. Yeah, that, that line that's on my screen right now, I kind of uh, maybe put in a bigger inverted head and shoulders. So right around that 267 to 268 level. Right there. Okay. Not in the Septembers that I'm looking at. There's not... Really, any action down there? Two ninety one. That would bring us. What would that bring us up to? What's the recent high? Well, two ninety three. You said. Two ninety four. Two ninety four. The two ninety ones have a hundred twenty. They're five. <laughs> the thing. Oh, that's not. You know, I don't know. I mean, I just. I. I, I can't. Put my. Um, head around it. But it's just, you know, it's it's almost like I want to have an income trade. Um, it got me thinking that yeah. I, wa I want to have this, you know, I want to have this take advantage, the best advantage, because we know that we're close to the highs. We know we have an administration that's very bullish and we're going to have these markets. Is, what's the odds of this turning over right now? Well, we're at a level that if we are going to pull back, this is where everyone's looking at. The 280 level. It really is. Everyone is talking about it. Um, if we get through this, I mean, they're going to start talking about this this area up here. There's no doubt if we get through this line right here, 280, 281, next level they're going to say retesting the highs. And it doesn't become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Pro do we get a nice rally once we break through this? I think tomorrow we rally hard. The market I, is up uh, 13 points right now. 13 points the futures are up. I don't disagree with you. I've been saying nothing's going to derail this market. The biggest pullback we had was in December, and yeah, it freaked some people out. Yeah, it did pull back, and it was. But still, by that dip, it's proved to work until it stops working. Yeah. But again, I was just just going out and saying if we bought those SPX uh, SPX L's at this point, the forty four dollars. A, a move back up to just up to the highs is a 20% move. That's a 20% gain. On, on 44 and a half to, 50, to 56. Yeah. Nine. So that's a nice nice move because you're getting three times the return. Remember, you're getting that leveraged ETF versus the SPY. The SPY is only a 5% move or five and change. Oh, this is a this is a triple? Yeah, this is a triple. So, I mean, a triple, yeah. you're getting that. You know, where this move here is a 5% move, well, let's see what it is. I can put this line in here, and then going up here to recent highs is a 5% move. It is. It's a 5% move. It's 14 points. 
about. And then if we take a look at the SPXL, same thing. It does look a little fur, you know, for some reason it looks a little, but that's right from there, right up to the highs. That's a 24%. Uh, hmm? How about? That's a 24% move. How about the July 44 calls? Well, I'm looking at the SPXL, XL. too. The July 44 calls? Yeah, I don't yeah. know how. I don't know. Let me see the current month. How do these things trade? Yeah. All right. There's, there was some volume today in these at the money and... Yeah, maybe at of... the money, right? Maybe just taking at the money. Um, July. Well, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the July 44s, just slightly in the money. Um, you can get them under five bucks, probably. Yeah. The, the 45s that have a little action in it. Yeah, exactly. The spread that's is about 40 cents, 20, 30, 40 cents. Um, but I'm sure that it would just have an opportunity. That's July. It's 141 days. Yeah, I mean, do you do have you like? You think it's hot before the summer? You know, our first level I think we get to is 48. So I mean, 44 to. 4, I mean, what what would our return be? Do you have one of those um, you know graphs that tell you the time and profits? Well, wait a minute. Let me see something. Because, you know, this pullback right here has me really um, interested in this. You know, as a, maybe one of the last opportunities before we do get that rally. Okay, it's something. You know, another way of, you know, that, that, what I'm trying to say is you get 100 shares, you know, of of that SPXL, you're investing, you know, $4,400 and you're getting 20% on that, um, 25%. It's just, it, it's just a good, it seems like a good way of making some money. It's not an aggressive trade. It's a, just, you're waiting it, waiting over time. You're not decaying here with the options. So you have some time. E3. All right, so delta of, I don't know. I think you might want to buy at least a delta of 70, meaning for every dollar move in the yeah. stock, you should get a 70 cent increase in the option. All right. So that would be the July 40s. There's seven by 740 right now. With a 70 delta. And then when you say 70, you're 0 0.70? Or 0 yep. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so that, that 0 0.70 represent a 70 cent move for every dollar move in the stock. All right. Well, if you think this thing is going. Yeah, I just think we're going back up. We're going to, we're going to highs on the S&P. And, you know, I'm looking at the best way to trade that up to that level <laughs> without without being stuck um, dealing with a time That's, crunch. My, my disclaimer is I don't trade inverse. Yeah, no, I know. Yes. So I'm just looking at it from a purely... And that's what I wanted to hear from someone who's... In standpoint. Yeah. Open interest, volume, yeah. delta, probabilities. So you're looking at um, the... What was... So break it down again for me. Which one? July? 40s. 40s. All right. Let's make sure we're on the same... They're trading 780? Seven by seven forty. Yeah, all right. Seven by seven forty volume, and they have a seventy. I have a seventy nine as my delta. All right. Oh, maybe it's okay. Wait. Same thing. Maybe I'm, I can't see. No, it's seventy nine. 
Okay, close enough. Yeah, I have a different one. It's I have the thirty six strike is a seventy nine delta, but that's okay. Am I looking at the right one? Am I looking at a weekly maybe? No, I'm looking at the monthly. There's, no, there's only yeah. 141 down SPXL. All right. So um, you're talking that. So what would be a comparable? So if it moved up there. 14. So what would that give us? What would our return be? You're saying for every point. So 44, and we had that to get on the SPX. You see. get probably almost 10 points in the options. Yeah, 10 points in the options, so. All right. Like nine, we call it nine eighty, nine seventy five. Even nine, you get nine points on your options. So that's a, you know, that's that's good. So. That's good. So I like doing the the math on this stuff. So if you had, so you had nine points on the options. Say you got in at yeah the seven seven area. <clears throat> say you got in at eight dollars. So you make those options worth seventeen. You're saying how I many? How much would? That's when we have to worry about like the t the time decay and stuff, right? Yeah, what it'd be it nine points or nine hundred dollars. Yeah, for for every for ten of them, say. Or I'm sorry, one of them. Yeah, for one of them. Right. So one of them. Dollars for every one. So contract. so that's a double, basically. Uh, nine. Yeah, almost. Sure. It's over a double. Nine to fourteen. Uh, yeah. If you're adding nine dollars to it, oh, you're saying fourteen. It went to four. F yeah. Yeah, it would be a fourteen point pop in the stock, but it'd be about a just under ten dollar move in the. So that would move the option. Say there was no time to get. It, just it would move it up to seven. It would move it up to seventeen. Nine. I'm just trying to calculate it out. How much would it lose because of the time? But you can't really. That's that. No, that but that's about right. All right. Is that right? So Am I calculating that right? Yeah. So that would be. Um, all right. So say all right. So we we lowballed and said seven hundred dollars per contract, and each contract. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're right. Seven. Right. 740. Call it 750 even. All right. So 750 per contract. If you bought, I'm trying to figure out what the comparison is, how much money I had to invest in the SPXL versus the option. I'm just looking at different ways of looking at it. Oh, you're definitely going to have to spend more on the stock. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd want to buy the options. Maybe I'll sell puts in this thing tomorrow. I thought you wanted to do this with the SPX. Uh, average, yeah. This is the S. I, I'd rather do it with the SPXL. That's, but I wanted to get Rob's opinion on it and see how he would approach it with options. And uh, now he's, you know, so we're looking at just different ways of, of looking at this, and maybe you know, looking at the delta, maybe looking at, you know, just looking at it. It's not bad. I like it. There's uh, even further out. If you don't expect this thing to have any kind of significant pullback, you can collect some nice premiums. Just selling puts is what I'll be looking Sorry, to do. I don't know that. <laughs> Shut up, Alexa. Oh, awesome. All right. Um, I, wrote, I wrote all this down. I actually recorded this just so I could have it and pass it on to people who might be interested in that strategy. Yeah, and even in the shorter term, if you don't think this thing is pulling back anything, you know, significantly. Yeah. Oh, there's some nice premiums in this. Not bad at all. In the SPXU? Or L, excuse me? SPXL, yeah. Yeah. So I'm s selling puts, meaning I'm bullish in a... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes bullish ETF. Yeah, <laughs> I can give you some fireworks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, another way of doing it. 
Yeah. Wow. Average Rick is saying his calls he sold are slowly decaying. Yeah. My call. Oh, oh, he sold calls against AT and T. I think he sold the thirty twos. He told me monthly thirty twos. All right. So what do we have here? Let me write this one down here. These are the July. 141 days, July 40, what was it, the 40s? No, what was it? What were we looking at, 40s? The 40s, yeah. So that's, all right. 44s would be half, almost half that in the money of 40. All right. And then the 45s are four. But you know, again, your delta's going down. Because, all right, so the 40s. So in the money, seven, 750, we'll call it 750. Awesome. All right. It's a thought. I mean, if you're looking for it to go high, I'd buy at least a delta of 0.7. Yeah. I'm glad you're not buying out of the monies. Yeah. Especially if you're going to be right about the move, you want to be in the money. So instead of put, putting in four, you know, right now you're looking at if you bought a hundred shares of the SPXL, you'd, you know, and of course, it's easy enough to calculate. You'd ba basically put, be putting up forty four hundred dollars. You'd be getting ten points on that. So you're getting ten, you're making a thousand dollars on your forty four hundred dollar investment. Now, if you put that same money, well, if you put the same money into this, at this level, say, um, what would that be? I think I pull out my calculator. Um, well, so you don't even have to do that much. I mean, to make a thousand dollars, basically, you just need to buy two of these things. And like you said, if, if if it moved up to that point, yeah, no, I mean you you only have to buy one, one, yeah, one making nine hundred dollars per contract. All right, if it goes to the highs. And now, is there a time frame I needed to go before go to the highs before that level before I have to start concerning myself with decay? And it starts, you know, not performing like it should because we're losing that time decay and that premium. Yeah, probably about the last month. Really? Yeah. All right. Because you're going all the way out to July. Yeah. You know, I would say June. And it doesn't even mean we have to hold on to the whole thing. I mean, you could be up three, four points on this and take it off. Right. I might do this. I like it. Just for our experience, just I'll do a couple calls on this. Yeah. We've about four, yeah. I like um, it. I think the uh, and I believe I don't know why it's not giving me this other figure that I'm look that I look for when I sell premium or I'm gonna buy premium. Yeah. So implied volatility shows forty one percent in SPXL. That's pretty high. I don't know if that's because it's a it is. ETF. But normally what I would want to do is when the implied volatility is high, I'd want to sell that, right? Because that means the fear there's more fear in it, so therefore yeah. it has more of a premium. Yeah. So you want to sell that inflated premium. So that's why I'd be looking to sell puts. Now, let's see what the spiders are. It's interesting. I never looked at this, John. So yeah, I, I, I think it'd be a good discussion. discussion. I was. I'm, I'm hope I'm clear clear enough on it. I'm. I'm a straight up. You know, I just trade the options like trading stock and just in and out of calls and puts. But wow. So this is. Uh, yeah. So okay, the implied volatility on the spiders, which is a single. <laughs> it's not a. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Trip. It's the benchmark. It was under 15%. So 15 times 3, 45. Okay, that's probably about 
right then. So this is about a third, two thirds less. Well, is this about a third? Vol yeah, that would be yeah. right. Yeah. It's about a third of the volatility. Yeah. The spiders are about a third of the volatility of the SPXL. Right, SPXL, which is a triple yeah. ETF. So this this is interesting, man. You might want to sell some puts in this SPXL now. So how would you do that? To run us through that again. You would just sell the which ones you're thinking that has the most premium that you want to. Um, are you looking at the same months and stuff, or are you looking at some a different strategy altogether? Well, just as an example, there's okay. So in 15 days, the options that are expiring, you could sell a 41 put. All right, so I'm gonna get to my puts right here. Let me bring those puts up. All right, 37 cents, or even the 42s. If you think this thing's just going to chug higher in yeah. the next couple weeks. Yeah. So if you sell those 42 puts that expire in two weeks. Yeah. Right now it has a probability of expiring worthless is 74%. Wow, that's good. So you'd make, so that's basically, you're going to be, you're going to see this thing kind of just go to zero. Yeah, you'd want it to do. Yeah. But, Right now it's fifty six. It's fifty by sixty. Fifty cents by sixty yeah. cents. The forty twos. All right. When it's expiring, I want to see this thing zero bid Five. offered at a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But that's you know. I mean, but as long as it stays above forty two, that thing will quickly start eroding. So you know what. We should. Uh, but are you are you kind of like naked in this? That if it went the other other way, this would just have, you know, really a no ceiling in it. Uh, yeah. If I went naked, it could. You know. So what happened to the road? Yeah, exactly. So then you're obligated to buy it at forty, forty two dollars. All right, forty two. Yeah. Regardless of where it goes, you're buying it at forty two in the marketplace. Yeah. But you would obviously cover it and take a loss. Yeah. What you can do is, so you can sell the 42s and collect 50 cents. And you can buy the, you can buy any one of those other puts to protect yourself. Yeah. And then it would be the difference between those spreads. So. Yeah. Say you sold the. Well, you could use your example. What if you sold the 42s? Sell the 42s and you buy the 39 puts. Yeah. As protection. So your maximum risk then is the difference between those spreads, which it. Between those strike prices, which is four bucks. All right. So if you sell the 42s. And you buy the, I'm sorry, you buy the 37s. That's a five dollar. So you're talking a 450. So you're collecting. Yeah, you collect 30 cents overall. Yeah. Because you'd be selling the 42s for 50 cents, and you'd be buying the 37s for 20 cents. Okay, so you're risking five bucks. All right. You're thing. Thirty cents. <clears throat> so, so when my head starts to hurt. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Um. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, that's exactly you know you know every time we talk, I think we learn a little bit more. I'm, I'm more interested in some, you know some of those income type of trades we were talking about, and I understand, you know, um, selling the puts and getting that, um, you know, it, it, I like your, your especially if you're taking that what are you calling it your 
you're buying protection on it. I feel yes. a little, I feel a little bit more better than that. Yeah, I mean, you'll make less on the trade because you're buying protection. Yeah. But it's just, it's, if you're wrong, you know. Yeah. But on the other side of things, if you're buy, if you're just um, going long on the calls, I mean, you just if it doesn't go your way, you don't, you, you know, goes it expires worthless. You have a downside risk. Uh, wait, say that again. Well, the calls. Uh, so we're looking at the calls before, whatever we were looking at over the July's, July forties, at seven. Well, whatever at seven fifty. I mean, the, the most you could lose is that seven fifty. Seven fifty. Whatever we bought the the calls at. The oh, that's right. They they were going for seven forty, seven fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which, you know, at least it's there. I mean, I guess I'm just saying the other way, if you shorted it, there's no, no, no one, if the market crashed and stuff, the thing takes off and it's $13. <laughs> <laughs> well, those would be rich people problems, I guess. But Yeah. Um, so Danny Boy says we're risking 500 to make $40 per contract, is it? Yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> listen to me, I know it doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like a very good trade from a risk-reward standpoint, but you're selling something that's 80% out of the money. Yeah. You're 74% out of the money, so. I like the, I like the SPXL trade better. Yeah. I'm, uh. I'm thinking about that one myself. Awesome. I like that the I like that the premiums are juiced up in this thing, John. Yeah. So sell the. You know what I'm gonna. I gotta make myself a note. Yeah, I got a lot of notes on my paper today. But I tell you though, SPXL. I'm talking about selling the. All right, March 15. The March 15. Um, March 42 puts, maybe. Yeah. Two and a half bucks out of the money. All right. And then we also said doing the... The July 40s. The July... 40s, around 40s. 740. Now, you think there's a big difference? Is there, is there really a big difference between... If I go back out to the... Um, I'm going to go back to the Julys here, and we're looking at the calls, and we'll look at the 40s here at $7. But once we jump to, um, you know, I'm looking at the price right now. It's 44 So we're right there in the money. Um, if we're looking at, say, $48, um, that breaks, the, you know, this this cuts it tremendously in half. I mean, more than half. It, it, it quarters this thing. Wait, 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 wait. SPXL, what are you trying to do now? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just bringing, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at the the price you of... The out of the money? Yeah, a little out of the money. A little out of the money. <laughs> Come on, man. No, Don't do that. I'm not going to do it because you taught that's me that that's question. not the right way of doing it. Yeah, the most you want, I'm telling you, is a 1% out of the money All right. option. You're you right. don't want your option to be more than 1% <clears throat> out of the money. Good, good, good rule. And is the delta, and what's the most important of the Greeks? Um, I mean, you, you, are you looking for something with a, a higher delta? I mean, if, I, if I'm looking for, a, I mean, I want to know going into the trade how much I think I can make. Yeah. You know, so the delta, yeah, theoretically, that's going to tell me math wise for every dollar on, that the stock appreciates. Whatever that delta is, is how much I'm going to make yeah. on the option. So those 45 calls that are a half a point out of the money, yeah, you know, they have a delta of not. Uh, sorry, 30. They only have a delta of 47. Yeah. You know. Um, you're right. You're, you're right. But I guess it's you know, it's all the formula how everything. Listen, I know, I know it, it. I know it bothers you to pay more 
for the option. It doesn't really. You know, in this case, it, I feel better about it. Okay. For some reason, I, I don't. It doesn't bother me that much. I feel a little safer that way. Yeah, I just feel like you're throwing your money away if you're too far out of the money. Yeah. You're right. I mean, if you're gonna if it's gonna work, it's gonna work. If it's gonna work, it's gonna work, and you want to be in the money already. Yeah. You want to be making that appreciation that you're looking for right away. You don't want this thing to rip two bucks and then you you're only still make you're still waiting percent. for another move. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it makes so, a lot of sense. You got it. Can't be cheap. And the other thing is, Danny Boy's asking. I would prefer to sell options. Like I said, when the premiums are high, when they're inflated. Why would you want to sell an inflated asset that you know is going to be worth less at some time? It's like if you could sell somebody a boat, <laughs> and then by the time they take it home, right? Once, yeah. once, once you put it in the water, or once it's sitting on a dry dock, that thing is de is decaying. It's value. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of collecting that money up front, and if I'm wrong, I give part of it back. A lot of options guys have told me that a delta of 70 is good. Yes, I agree. Well, this has been a good conversation, Rob. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, no, I heard you on the radio, and I was, I was actually trading. Oh, nice. Like I said I was trading before. Um. But what was the other thing? I was looking at insiders for you. All right. As well. Do you have anything you want to share, share right now? Um, one second. So there's the SPX. I'm also looking at this as a one, two, three channel with a top pivot and target area above us. So I think there's a lot of things here that I like. Um, making that parallel line um, here. All right, listen, this is a cheapie. I can see us going right up to, hold on, let me just analyze this here. Yeah, so 48, 49, 48. And that would be, you know, all right, go ahead. I'm liking that. What were we talking about? Oh, the uh, options. I mean the insiders. Yeah, so uh, Cot Corporation. Ticker is Charlie, Oscar, Tom. All right. Actually, it looks like a little divergence there. Just off yeah, the so highs. Had, had that lower trend line touch. Yeah. Lower trend line. With, lower trend line. 200 period moving average. Nice um, candle action on this thing. I think it goes back to 1575. 1501. I think you'll up in it. Yeah. Um, the one thing I'm looking at though is February 26th. So a couple of days ago, you had cluster buying. You had a director buy 13,500 shares, brand new position. Is this where it, it, it gapped down here or it just got smashed here down to $14? It got to, that when they came in? Yeah, uh, or was that a couple of days ago? Yeah, two or days ago. Yeah. It, would, it would have to be. I mean, they wouldn't buy before the big earnings coming out. <laughs> like, Or they so did. Huh? So they met They met their fourth quarter estimates. All right. But the stock was down 11%. So they knew there they was like, this is ridiculous. We're going to buy it, you know. But, so they stepped in. Three guys, cluster buying a director, brand new position. He only spent $200,000, but that's a brand new position. Thomas Harrington, CEO. Yeah. He bought a half a million dollars worth of stock. A sizable chunk, 33000 And then the CEO of S&D Coffee and Tea bought uh, three quarters of a million dollars worth of I like stock. it a lot, Rob. I think it's going to end up on the watch list. Okay, so the things that we're looking at in this trade... Cluster buying, the size of the buys, the fact that one of the guys bought it, it's a brand new position for him. It's after earnings, so these guys are putting some, 
their faith behind the company. I think you get another 75 cents out of this thing. I think it moves back up to the highs here, which is... Maybe 17. Yeah, I think you, you're moving right back up to the highs, the way they bought this. I mean, how were the earnings on this? I could tell uh, you. They said they, hold on, they said they met their estimates, but they... Here, strong 2018 results. They hammered the thing on the uh, on the news, though. I mean, it must have been guidance, must have been. Because you can look, Danny boy, on your insiders, you get a you could actually um, oh yeah. see how many so, how many shares he has already. So if it if he bought a certain amount and it says how many shares he he's holding, and if it's the same amount, then that's a new position. Yeah. If he bought new position and says shared how many outs or how many he's holding and it's way more then you know that's just added to the position he already had. Correct. But you got three guys. Two of them are CEO. You know they're C level executives. One's a director. He's putting his money where his mouth is and buys stock for the first time, even cheaper than those two other guys. Yeah. You know, I like it. Water. What do they do? Water? Water, bottled water, brewed tea, coffee. All right. Salty coffee, you know. It's a good business to be in. I love water trade. Look at that trend line from the 25th to the 27th to the 28th, and we came down to it, almost uh, nailed it today. Yeah, hmm. so 15 bucks, you got some support. Yeah. It already bounced nice, right? I mean, off the 27, 28. Let me see that again on the daily. Looks like it was up two days. Oh, I was, it is. It's been, why didn't I see this before? I didn't see the uh, the whole thing. It didn't update for me properly. Um. Oh, yeah, this thing's good. I'm liking this. Yeah, it's a nice move off that trend line. Yeah. So you agree, right? Yeah. Back to almost 16. I, I like it. I want to, you know, I mean, it's cheap enough just to get a couple hundred shares on this and just to get a couple points on it. Or a point. A point. Why do we get to 17 on this? That's two points. I got it written down. I'm circling it. I'm going to make a chart for it tomorrow. Um, Holy shit. <laughs> what? Remember Cliff's? Cliff Natural Resources? CLF? Yeah. What is it? 30, oh, $11. I forgot oh, no, about that's, it. that's Cleveland Cliff's. Wasn't there two? It was Cliff Natural Resources and then Cleveland Cliff's. Cleveland Cliff's is CLF. All right. What yeah, but what was uh, Cliff Natural Resources? C, something I can remember. I don't know. C F yeah. it was right. No, that's C F Industries. Oh yeah, that's C F Industries. Oh, uh, Cliff, Cliff was Cliff Natural Resources. It was C F. All right. Change the name. Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold on. So I think they. Uh, it was. No, it wasn't. They they went they went under Cliff Natural Resources. They got bought out or something. Okay, did somebody else get assigned that ticket? Then? This, yeah, this probably did. Well, let's see. How far does this go out? No, this is going out too far. Unless they switched over. I don't know. CLF. I guess Jerry's saying it was. So, all right. Cleveland Cliffs. All right. I don't know. I'm confused because I thought it was always Cliff Natural Resources, CLF. Maybe they changed their name. Let's see what else. Royal Crown. Oh, I used to love Royal RC Cola. Was my favorite growing up. They're behind. That's what Cot Corporation is. They did change the name. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, let's see. Auto. Jerry's on it. Thanks, Jerry. Well, we're taking we're taking his word for it. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure it was, John. Yeah, yeah. No, I am too. I, 
We've talked about almost every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel. I'm sorry, I'm just doing a quick scan. Oh, boy. John. What? Well, we missed one. All right, pull it up. All right. Son of a bitch. Boy, Charlie, boy, Paul. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Charlie, boy, Paul. All right, count it. Thank this you. is the bank. Yeah. Was that the bank the you old, follow? This is the old Bayonne Community Bank. Yep. I, I even have it on the weekly here. Uh, the weekly, we put that, we, that trend line was there the last time we talked about it. We put this trend line there. I just, you know, now I'm look, going, looking at it, and we came down to it. Chopped yeah. around it. What? Director bought $1.2 million worth of stock. What? Bought 100, owns 159 now. He just bought it? Yeah, he bought it a couple of days ago. It popped on that. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry. This yeah, this was announced two days ago after the close. So yeah, so it popped on it. Two days, so it went from twelve sixty. I don't know right where he got it. Shit. But I'm telling you, man. Oh, and so did my. Oh, great. Guess what? My uh, accountant bought one point two six four million dollars. <laughs> oh, right below him. Well. Oh, so wait. So maybe these were planned. Okay, yeah, they're all getting in at twelve sixty four. Joe Brogan, that's my insurance agent. <laughs> these my... guys are all listen. All of these guys that are on the board yeah. are all businessmen in Bayonne or Jersey City or the Hudson County area. Uh huh. And you know them from gro growing up in the in business? No, when I was actually uh, when I was married, my ex is from Bayonne. All right. And I lived in Bayonne. So I utilize all these guys, the accountant, yeah. the state farm agent. Wow. And the this, it sounds, sounds like the mob. Yeah. They're all in it. They're all in it. It's all they're all in The garbage them. man is in it too. Oh man, I'm telling you. Blue horseshoe loves this thing. Okay, wait. So back to this Bay Owned Community Bank though. Yeah. And this is something Keldar and I were talking about the other day. It's a $13 stock that's paying a 4% dividend, four and a quarter. So it pays a 56 cent dividend on a $13 stock. Wow. That's pretty good in a bank. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is a nice, respectable. It's a nice pullback, too. It's a nice pullback. You have an opportunity there. Yep. So I think you get a pullback in this thing. And when I file my taxes this year, I will be asking him what he thinks about it. Good. Um, next one. Hold on. Okay, Bayonne Community. Oh, Jordan's going to be so pissed when I tell him that these guys are buying it. I miss it. All right. All right, hold on. This is this is a big purchase, John. It's indirect though. Avis. Avis, rent a car. C A R. C A R. Avis. So there's a huge purchase they by earnings. They bought it after earnings. Uh, February twenty second. Um, when were earnings? Six, seven days ago. They might have bought it right before earnings. They might have freaking, man. They bought it on they, the 20... They, they bought it on the 22nd. Second. All right, no. But is that when they bought it or is that when they filed and they could have made it, bought it three days earlier? Which would oh, be no. They bought it on the 22nd. Uh, all right, so that was after earnings. Three, and they reported it on the 26th. All right. So I bought it after the earnings. So that was what? That was over a weekend. They had three days to report it. Okay. They bought it after earnings, you're saying? Yeah. A couple okay. days after earnings. The earnings gave it a nice gap up. It went from 30, 29 to 33. Jesus, that was a nice move. They bought it up there. 
you know, already gave up, up that four points. Right. It's pretty good. But remember, I mean, is it going to fill that gap? I don't know, under 32. Yeah. I don't know. But these guys are buying it at the high, John. Yeah. That, that tells you something. Again, guys, the lesson is if insiders are buying at the highs, when it's making new highs, that's a statement. They're making a statement saying, I'm putting my faith behind this stock that's trading at nosebleed levels, which will probably continue to go higher. Okay, next one. I know you're going to like it. Mattel. Oh. M-A-T. Didn't it get clobbered on um, yeah. Hasbro and Barbie and all of that bullshit, that story? A long time ago, right? I mean, that's been yeah. has been crushed back here in December. And Toys R Us, when Toys R Us closed down, it went down to nine twenty. Well, a director bought almost a half a million dollars worth of stock. On paid this nineteen, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Paid thirteen ninety six. Thirteen, he paid. Thirteen ninety six. So he bought it just a few days ago on the pullback. It closed that gap, perfect close of that gap. It actually gapped up, ran, and then something happened, really got hit. I closed that gap and started moving back up, but that the guy came in here and bought it. Huh? He probably knows something. Let's see. Mattel. He knows. Someone knows something there. Obvious. Mattel partnered with MGM. MGM. Mattel. MGM to turn Viewmaster into a movie. Toy company's not back to normal. Oh, Viewmaster. Is that the thing when you click and you have the slides in it? Master. <laughs> You're going to make that into a movie? What are they? I don't know. All right. I'm not a big fan of toy stocks. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Build-A-Bear. I'm not a fan of any of that. <laughs> About the... Uh... About McCormick, look at that move off of that lower trend line. That was a perfect fill of that gap too. Just about filled it. We'll call it. Nice, man. Oh, my favorite stock. Yeah. What time is it here? Ten. Oh, what time is it? Ten. Fifty-three. Oh, I gotta go. All right, Rob. Let me. Um, let me. I want to shut off the video. Send this out, and then I gotta get out of here. Let me stop this. Video anyway. I'm sending this video out to the members. Um, I'll, I'll post that tonight. I was gonna do some some um, HPS stuff. Just do a fa I'll do a fast, fast HPS update here. What I do like tomorrow, I do like that cut. I like the cut. Um, Try batting. <laughs> I like it. Fifteen dollars here. Um, the ones I have circled RSG. Um, I think we're going to continue to break out on the RSG and waste management. Those are two strong stocks. Um, that's a big one. Fastenal, the same thing. I actually took a position in Fastenal. Didn't it tried to break out, didn't follow through today. Um, Coca Cola, J C Penny, no I R M. I think. Did you give me that one? Oh, I R M. Iron Mountain. It was a divergence. Oh, right. So it was, I remember you saying that earlier. Yeah. I, I wrote it down. I circled it as a divergence. I think it's a good divergence. Just off, I mean, it's just, it is a, a it's just a perfect divergence. So I'm going to keep it on the list and watch it. Um, hey, what do you think about Cheesecake Factory? Oh, I haven't looked at it. Here is um, Discovery. Had a nice candle the other day, and it's starting to move back up. Let's take a look at Cake. cake. Um, gapped up, pulled back, starting to circle back up. Stochastic starting to turn back up. I never trade it, Rob. Never trade it. I think it's greasy food, and I think hillbillies go there. <laughs> they got one in Freehold that I've been to, and yeah. I don't know. I'm not, not really a fan of this. I'm not either. I just it, never, I never trade it. Oh, you know what I love? Um, CME. Check out this wedge pattern. Pull back on the 200. Yeah, this this thing will go back to 185, just shy of that. I mean, at least. the trend has been so strong. Top trend line. Um, 
you know, it's just holding that 200, slowly moving up. This is a nice extended pullback. The wedge pattern gives us the timing. The 65% of the pattern typically breaks out. I mean, we're up against the trend line now, but still, I think, uh, you know, you got a nice pullback off the highs to start looking at this again. If you're going to look for this to trade back up into the top part of that pattern, if we put this in here, you know, you have this big air, blank area up here. We're going to get back up there. So the CME is up on the list. That'll probably be on the watch list for tomorrow. Tesla, I, you know, anything Tesla's a, a short? I don't want to short Elon Musk, but. Uh, I stay away from that stock. That's on my do not trade list. Yeah. Five minute chart here. They can, they got crushed. And the t Tesla came out and said, first quarter, we're going to have a profit. Then I have. Um, GT, John. What was that? Oh, Goodyear Tire. I oh, Goodyear yeah. Tire, yes. Another, tire. another perfect wedge pattern. Perfect wedge pattern. Love to see this break out. It's four day pullback. It looks like it wants to go tomorrow. Futures are up twelve twenty five right now. LW. I have it circled. Lamb you ever hear this one? This one I found before. Looks like a decent little candle yesterday. Um put in a double bottom, starting to turn back up on a divergence. Oh, that's a beautiful divergence. Jumps right, right at it. Yeah, it jumps right out at you. The further you scroll out, you can see it. It's a nice pullback. And it's a nice pullback and a long, long uptrend. So it's a kind of an extended pullback. I don't know if that means that the business is starting to uh, fade away here. Because it looks like um, it was really strong here. Now it's a downward trend. But the divergence. I mean, I'm just looking at divergence. So we wrote it down. It should be on the list. CME. Um, QSR. QSR, I restaurant group. I've been following those. And it was... Um, it's hanging in there. Yeah. Oh, you know, I got to take two interactive. I started getting into that here. And I had a pretty decent candle today. I need to get a follow through tomorrow. Uh, oh, you know what I saw on TV, John? I was watching CNBC. Mondelez is actually paying people to be chocolate tasters. Oh, well, nice. I saw, <laughs> I saw they were like, hey, man, if you have a sweet tooth, they're like, you, know, you can actually go and work for Mondelez International. You know what? And they'll pay like eight hours a week, John, to just taste chocolate. Um, Mondelez is perfect right here. Perfect. It broke out a large, large breakout. Look at the weekly chart here. This is a large-scale breakout, and this is the first pullback to the breakout level. So right here, the pullback, the first pullback to the breakout level. Give me away that. that. That's what I see. I I've been tracking this one for years, and then every so often. Then when, um, who who got out of it, who was in it, it was... Um, Icon, right? It wasn't Icon, it was, it was uh, either Andrew, uh, it was one of the guys. Um, what's the name one of the other guys with the blonde hair? Or no, with, with the gray silver hair. You taking Ackman? Ackman. It was either Ackman... Or Mondelez. And they got out of their position. They got out of their position. Then then hold on to it. He was hoping for a buyout or a takeover or something and kinda of, Oh uh what's his name? Uh, uh Nelson Peltz. Peltz? Yeah. Maybe it was Peltz. Anyway, he, uh, the good there is a pullback here after a breakout, which is nice. He unloaded $168 million worth of stock. Yeah. And Ackman took a stake in 2015. Yeah. Ackman. That's who I was thinking. Ackman. Yeah. But I think he sold his position, too. I mean, in 2015... You look at these people, and they got it in 2015. It was pretty much just going sideways for six, seven years. It's finally starting to break out here. He says, actually, it says that he, he increased his stake. All right. And oh. Mondelez. Hell, man, they make Oreos. How bad could they be? <laughs> I love Oreos. Yeah. I don't eat them. I don't know why they put the double fill in it. I think they had a perfect combination of just enough cream and cookie. Now they... Everything I grab, 
my kids weren't like the Oreos they, all, all the time. Was, oh, oh, it's Oreo. Then I bite into it, and it's like, oh, cream. There's no more balance there. They ruined another thing. It's like when they put Chip Ahoy, they demanded more chocolate chips. I said, I don't need more chocolate chips. It was a perfect combination. I don't need no new bag. I Just cut all that crap out. John, I got chips ahoy that have been sitting in my How dare Skippy from... peanut butter take 50% of the fat out? How dare they? <laughs> I have to go through all the cans now. 50% lower fat. 40% scares me. I think that fat is very important for the taste. Anyway, I, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here because I got to get out of here. Let me stop the video. The video's being stopped. We'll see you in the market. Hold on. Let me.